There we go. Thank you. All right. So we are having our um, April Finance Committee meeting. So we have caught up on some of the financial statements. We have made it through November and December. Um, getting December done was pretty critical. Uh, it allowed us to finally wrap up the year, get our surplus figured out, as well as uh, get our 2023-2024 budget published out to council, out on the website, as well as adding it to our accounting system, which was what we needed to get rolling on 2023. Um, so just kind of high level summary, all the details are included in here for your reference, but I want to hit on some highlights in the 2022 financial statements for December. Um, the estimated general fund surplus was about $187,000. I know you've already seen that number because I've sent it out to you. The mayor also talked about it in his last mayor's report at the council meeting. All funds were within budget and all funds were positive, which are two of the requirements that we get audited on annually. So pleased to report that everything looked good. Um, like I said, we got that wrapped up and we went straight into January, 2023. So we are working on those, just trying to get us caught up, but it's definitely going quicker than it did in the beginning because we do have everything out of access everything into Excel. So it's going a lot quicker now that we have the tools that we need to get those done each month. Um, any questions on, I guess I kind of covered one and two with that. Any questions on either one of those? Okay. Hi. Oh, Catherine. Go ahead. You called on Richard. Oh. My, my question is a meeting or so ago, uh, you and John talked about getting new financing software. Uh, uh, is that still happening? Uh, uh, are you all of the accounting in Excel now? Uh, we are, our accounting software is gonna stay the same. That's our Springbrook, which are what you see with those, um, the monthly revenue and expense reports that are line by line by fund by bars code. What we really wanna do is get uh, a new budget module. <laughs> and Sean Tay has actually been already looking into that. Uh, the one that I published was out of the access database just because it was so close to being done. I didn't want to start over. But by the time we start budgeting next year, I want to get a new budget module because as I was perusing through that, uh, it dates back to 2004. So it's 19 years old. And I think it's time to do something different um, there are a couple that our Springbrook people have said integrate well with Springbrook, as well as being like live databases that we can have on the website. So that would be the hope is to um, get something current that integrates with our current accounting system and that we can just have on the website that's more interactive and more up to date as we do budget amendments and things like that. But until we get caught up on these financials and really get into cleanup mode, we're not quite there, but we will be there by the time we start our next budget. Thank you. Yep. So <clears throat> Angie, you said I missed something you said about $187,000 surplus or something. Mm -hmm. Can you say what you said again and expand on that? Yep, I'll point it out. So Sarah, can you scroll down to the December financials? I'll show them exactly what I'm meaning so you can visualize it. So if you go down a couple more pages, it'll be the one with the general fund, this one, this one right here. Right. So what I did was I took... Um, I think I actually might have included the surplus. Is it down at the bottom, Sarah? The budget page that showed where we were at. It might be after the December financials. Because what we did was we took December and we pushed those ending fund balances into the beginning fund balances for the 2023-2024 budget. And when we did that, 
what we do to calculate the general fund surplus is to see how far above the $2.5 million target we are. And I believe that number was like 2.687 and change. So when I say general fund surplus, I think it might be down like at the If I put it in here, we'll see. But what I did to calculate that was um, in your adopted budget, if you look at the exhibit A, it's the amount over the $2.5 million target that council has elected to keep in the fund balance. That's what we consider the general fund surplus. So let me, <clears throat> let me see if I understand that correctly because the, the these, I'm, I have my, financial summary right here. Yep. Um, and and Sarah's scrolling really quickly. So I it's it's a little hard to follow. I hope it's not for everybody. The ending fund balance showing on uh, the uh, monthly cash activity summary per actuals, which is like the third page in mm -hmm. um, says 3,183,911. Yes. Yes. Um, which then you subtracted 2.5 million from that to come up with sort of this amount, or am I missing something? And yes. then I'm I'm I flipped over and I I actually put my actual budget in my book, and the ending balance is showing two million six hundred and eighty-seven thousand four hundred and thirty. So that's where you're coming up with the 180. Yeah. So you'll see where that 3.183 that you see in the December financial report that's on here. Right. That is in your budget as the beginning fund balance. Right, right, right. And yeah. I had seen that. Yep. And then you add the revenues, take out the expenses, and then you come up with the 2.687. Okay. So we're actually sitting, and I'm assuming you're going through that. We're sitting on 187,000, some 430, some. Yes. For above our target. Yes, exactly. Even though our ending balance is higher than that. And are we looking then at the budget now and sort of closing the book on December? Uh, the books are closed in December. We're closing the books for January right now. Okay. So everything's okay. done through the end of the year. Now we got to get January, February, and March done to be full. Right. Yeah. Is that going to be faster? It is faster. It's going way quicker because we have all the tools and we kind of know what we're doing now. <laughs> so when we started this, we had no, no tools other than what was in access, which we can't use. And we had no checklist, no like monthly routine, no nothing. So we're creating that as we go. And month by month, we're getting quicker and quicker at it. Okay, good. It's been, a, it's been a real learning curve, but we're 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 figuring it out. It's kind of kind of fun, actually. But Rich, so help me with uh, use some words like budget tool, something new that you might want to do. Uh, what always holds me hostage as a business owner or even a council person is you personally as a manager were uncomfortable with the tool we were using before, obviously. You've struggled to get out of it and close the year and start on next year. If we had had a tool that the county or Hoquiam or Aberdeen or Kazi that anybody else was using, you would have built-in help from other close municipalities to help you. When we're looking at this next tool, are you seeing uh program budget programs that these other cities and municipalities are using that you like um we are going to i'm not even familiar with what they use to be honest my goal is to get it so that it works with our accounting software and when we do that we have people through our accounting software and through the new budget module that will support us. So it's it's no different than what we're doing with our payroll conversion right now and what we did with accounts payable. That support comes through 
these new programs that we purchase. And there we call them constantly. We're on the phone with ADP probably once a day. So right. that's where the support comes in. Um, there's no support for an access database. You either know access or you don't know access. And nobody in this office knows access. It's kind of archaic. Um, so it's getting something up to date that stays supported. So we have somebody to call because Shantae has been on the phone with Springbrook. I'm endless times trying to, how do we import this? How do we create this? How do we do this? And they're, they're, they're experts. They tell us what to do, but that's what we need for this budget module too, is an expert to help us along, get us trained up and somebody that we can call when we need help and they can help us through it. And this would be something that you in the future would also be proficient in yourself? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dante and I are both proficient in all this stuff now. Okay. <laughs> no, I it's... Just, I just, I, you know, there's always a situation I know. in life where there's an, a, an emergency situation and, yep. you know, we just need to set up the city so when your office is in duress that we have other places to go for help. And not be set up like you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's an, that's another reason we're getting these systems online. In the event that Melissa had to be out for payroll, I can have I can call up ADP and say, "Walk me through payroll." It right. doesn't necessarily even have to be someone in this office, as long as we can call somebody at ADP and say, "I need help." So Melissa can't do it. They'll be able to walk us through that. So it's having these systems that are supported is is huge. It's okay. really thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? I, I'm going to have some operational questions. I just don't want to start before you're ready to take some of my uh, questions that are just because I'm newer to the group. No, go ahead. Uh, so, you know, one of them is on the last page, you know, as I'm going through with our, our 300 pages of stuff, help me understand the repetitiveness of some pages that to me look the same. So I'm going to just throw out some page numbers. And these were office and administration. And it's like page 264, 277, 283, where it kind of looks exactly to the same to me, but I don't understand why we have different page numbers for things that look the same. Numbers are different, but I didn't know if they were an employee focused page or, or what are you looking at the budget what what document are you looking at well page yeah yeah the yeah 300 and some pages in one doc and i'm like 264 277 and 283 all had similar uh entries for office and administration and i just would love to, i've never asked why they're repetitive I think you're looking at the monthly expenditure reports okay. and I can, so when you're that deep in the report, those are our utilities most likely. So we have a water office and administration. We have a sewer office administration. We have a storm office administration. So within each utility fund, we have different, um, I guess you could call them sub departments. Okay. So that's what that is. It's basically, um, you know, sewer has transmissions and water has mains and hydrants. And so each utility is going to have those office and administration as kind of the catch-all. So rather, rather one page inclusive of everything, they're separated by department. Yep. Okay. I'll let somebody else ask their questions. Well, I, I had one sort of comment goal wondering, and as I'm looking as I looked at the budget and I, I looked specifically at um, debt service, we've got a number of ARRA and Carrillo, um, some different um, debt services that look like the balances are getting pretty low. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we can sort of switch focus. I'm hoping maybe we could switch focus and rather than buying new fun things, pay down some of this debt and get out from under it. I, I'm, <clears throat> um, and, I, and you're the one who knows this a lot better than I. Some of these seem like there's a little bit of revenue coming in and so much service on it that we're actually going backwards. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm 
sort of wondering if on some of these debt service funds, it would be practical just to retire that debt and maybe set ourselves up a little bit better if we have to do some sort of debt obligation, general obligation bond going in the future sometime, if we had some of this off our plates. So I could tell you the geo debt, the two big ones, which are the fire station and the convention center, we cannot call those yeah, bonds those. early. Yeah, those are we're stuck with those. Right. But the water treatment plant, there's two loans that we did back uh, in 01 and 02. And the reason we've never been real, um, we don't want to pay off debt to take out new debt, especially in this case, because the interest rates on these are like 1%. So if we paid these off and then had to finance something new, we'd probably get a, like a 6% interest rate right now. So that's probably, that's why we haven't really done anything is because the interest rate is so low with those. Um, and the LID is just that we get what we get when people pay their LID payments. It's something that we can look at, but we've never really in the past few years have been in the place uh, like we were in 2016, 2017, where we had a bunch of surplus money to pay off debt because we've been using that money to buy stuff that we need instead and not take out new debt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with each budget cycle, we would just assess that. And if there's extra money in water that we can use to pay that off, by all means, let's do it. We just haven't really been in that position. Rich? I'm, I'm just something I, I believe that we should be sort of thinking about to clear some of that, yeah. some of this, off. And it, if I can use the example of the, the water treatment plant shows an ending ba beginning balance of, I don't know if this is 2,745, but an ending balance of 3,245. So we're actually, in that case, we're, we're going backwards. And I saw, I saw that in a couple of them. It's just sort of a, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the woman who paid off her student loans you know six years early because I wanted to get out from under the debt and I I understand having low interest and and not wanting to incur other debt because it would be higher interest I get that but if we just paid it off and we didn't incur any other debt then that funding goes back into whatever department it came out of and I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. If some of those funds, if, if we could take a look at them and see if some of those funds, we could retire that debt as we come up with surplus over the next year. And then I wanted to, she had a segue for me. What do you do just because we have a balance surplus of 2.6 and change? We've got millions and millions and millions of city dollars. Teach us what you do with all that cash. Is there any instrument for us to use legally that actually pays you some interest on those millions and millions of dollars? Um, I've never been taught that. The vast majority of our money right now is in the state local government investment pool. And we make about 80 grand a month interest on that. What's that interest rate though? Uh... I'm not sure at this right now, it fluctuates. So it's depending on what the market's doing, it gets down super low if the interest rates market wide are super low and then it goes up. So right now the LGIP though is comparative with any other investment thing that we would do. So we just leave it in there to gain interest. Do you have different opportunities for example you could put money with the county or or such or is it totally illegal for you to buy any uh, uh i don't want to be ignorant say a cd but is it illegal for us to do any of those completely safe investments no you can invest your money in different things i've looked into that in the past though and what that does some of those tie up your money for a length of time sure and we have pretty substantial debt payments still. So it's not like I can move, you know, 50 million into a CD and not have access to it. So that's kind of been one of the things that has kind of held me back as well. 
but are you able to, to move 10 million because you're not going to touch that for two or three years and make, you know, on a government instrument, 4%. Yes. If that's legal. I don't know what's legal. In the event that the interest rate in the LGIP would be low and the other investments would be high, yes, that would be a good move, but it's just, it's not right now. It's just comparable. So yes. you feel that the state is actually paying you in the 4% area? Yeah. It got down, it got down to like less than one at one point, but sure. that was the market. Yeah. But right now it's. Because when I did some of the math on some of the money, it didn't, you know, I was, I think I calculated it at a half a percent, try, you know, just trying to figure it out myself. Mm -hmm. Could we ever have an ability to actually see what they're paying you? The LGIP? Yeah. Yeah. It comes on our monthly statement. Maybe, maybe next month you could throw that out. It's just for fun. Sure. I've got more questions, Catherine. Um, I'm good for now. If if I can ask, if you segue for me, I might have something, but I'm good right now. Richard, do you have anything? I don't want to own the conference here. I'm good. I'm I'm paying attention and, and listening. I'm good. Okay. Well, Angie, you've taught me a couple of things. I appreciate it. Now I just got weird questions like, you know, planning department spent eleven thousand bucks with Alpha Media, the radio station. Mm -hmm. Any idea what we did there? Yes. Eleven grand. That was uh, before the current budget. So twenty one, twenty two, we didn't have marketing budget in the convention center fund, so we used general fund. So that okay. was promoting events. Okay. Uh, explain to me, uh, so page 68 of that same document I talked about, it talks about transfers. Teach me what it means when I'm looking at pages that say transfers. So a transfer is, you know how we do the cost allocation? This, this is the best example I can give you. So we do that study and then we come up with the amount of money, let's say the water department needs to basically refund the general fund for all their accounting services. Okay. So that's, it's basically just moving okay. money from fund to fund. Okay. To make it fair amongst the departments to uh, subsidize how we're charging for yes. even or, year. Or... Another one is like the street fund. Like we the street fund is funded 90 some percent by the general fund. So we transfer money into there to basically operate the street fund. Okay. Yeah. It's all set in the budget. So when we looked at some of, when I looked at some of the numbers on the budget, um, I don't know if, you know, if this is just a rounding error in city budgets, but um, you know, and, it, and more importantly, did we take care of it in 23, 24 budget? So like the city hall budget was 360 grand out of round compared to where we budgeted. How did, how did you handle some of that stuff for next year? I'm sorry, I don't uh, remember what we did. We upped our IT budget a lot <laughs> because that's what that was caused by because we kept adding all this stuff to secure our system. Um, so was we that budget, part of any budget modification though that we approved? Um, so the general fund, as long as the general fund doesn't go over at, in total, it's fine. So a lot of the funds were underspent. A couple of the funds were overspent, but in the whole bucket of the general fund, we were still under budget. So that so doesn't no modification needed then. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the city any, any idea why the judge spent 13,000 bucks more than they should have? Was that also uh, computer stuff? The judge, we might have done a rate adjustment somewhere in there is the only thing okay. I can think of. Sorry, I just got a million dumb notes for little oh, things. Yeah. I think the last one I had was uh, how are you, how can you make the council sleep well at night and the mayor about um, how you're determining severance reserve because we know we have people 
retiring. And I've had buddies in other cities that have had huge, massive checks when they leave. How are you figuring that out? I have a list. <laughs> so each budget cycle, I ask the department heads, who's retiring, who's leaving, who's this? And then I budget hire because there's going to be people that we don't know that are leaving that leave. So I always am very, very, um, I budget that one high. There's no, it just comes when we generate payroll. So it's not like it's, oh, we need to borrow more money from the general fund for it. It's just part of our payroll calculation. So I get a list. Um, people know when they're going to retire. They give us, maybe not the date, but at least the year. And then I can go in and see what their leave balances are and calculate it. And then I come up with an estimate on what it what it's going to look like. So this is just you being proactive. It's not that you've just put in a massive reserve that is guessing how we're going to be in five years. No, it's it's person by person and hours and. Okay. Yep. All right. You've extinguished all my questions, guys. <laughs> that does segue. <clears throat> Uh, for me, a question about um, the severances. And when I was a state employee for a long time, and when I retired from Highline School District, I had a certain amount of vacation and a certain amount of um, sick leave left. And we were only allowed, um, th there was a cap on that. And, and what we were allowed to do is they bought down like one for four. So if I had four days of vacation, I only got paid out for one. Mm -hmm. um, same way with vacation time. Uh, I'm sorry, sick leave was four for one. Vacation time was a little bit different, but you could only accrue a certain amount. How does our... How does our system work? Does it work like that? Or is there something baked into the union fund that says, if you have 300 days of sick leave, or excuse me, 300 hours or 3,000 hours, you're going to get paid straight out for all of that? Yes. Same question it, for vacation. How does it work? It's dictated by each collective bargaining agreement. So I will say that hours are capped, though. Um, most of them are use it or lose it. Um, but Vacation is usually 100% buyout, comp times 100%, but sick leave varies anywhere from 12 and a half for some people to 100% upon retirement for others. So it's just based on our agreements and those also go into those calculations I do as well. So, so the city is not controlled by the state's retirement system like we were at the school district? Nope, it's group by group. Okay, something to think about in bargaining for different groups, isn't it? Yep. And, and Catherine, we just updated the non-union members oh, of the city. Yep. Right, the exempt one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Richard. So I have a specific question. Actually, it was about last year's contract on the Bell Canal to do a pest uh, uh, harvesting for the, for the aquatic weeds. And I don't want to get into, I may be getting into, into Bruce Malloy's lane, uh, but you guys are the right person to, act, to ask. So because we did not do that test harvesting, uh, my assumption is, is that contract is still valid. And there's a new contract uh, for 23-24 for, for harvesting. Uh, so there's, there's actually two contracts. Uh, and the 22 contract is still a valid contract with Doug Dorling. Is that correct? Or do you, J John, you're shaking your head no? Um, um, or am I way out of my lane and, and I need to just let this go? It's, no, it, this is one of those use it or lose it, isn't it? Yeah, the, the contract was redone this year. So the, the old contract is invalid and i don't know what we did with the money sometimes we roll it over and keep it in the fund and other times that we reallocate it and i don't know exactly what we did with that but there's not two contracts um in place there's just the new one that that the council that was brought before um and that it has um 
har harvesting in this this one also. So if that helps you, Richard? That 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 answers the question. Uh, uh, and I don't, don't remember the exact number. I think it's 110,000. Uh, but the, the exact number is not important to, 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 to my understanding, uh, because I was under the impression that Doug Dorling was still going to uh, harvest weeds based on the 22 contract, but that's, that's gone. That, that's, that's, and I, I think we may have rolled it. I mean, I think that's where you probably think that. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. I got an answer for you while you have your hand up too. I just pulled up our LGIP statement and it's uh, our net earnings rate is 4.75% right now. Fantastic. Yeah. That makes us not have to think. How often do you have to think though about getting money out of one checking account hypothetically and pushing everything that way? I know my own people have a big problem with doing that. Like how much do you keep in your operating account? Yeah, that's what we would need to do because we have to keep that money enough in there to pay the expenses plus the debt. So it, yeah. we would have to really do some number crunching to figure that out. Yeah, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna segue off of Richard, if I may. What has, our, has historically, what have we done and should we do with this city? And Mayor, this is in, in, in your thought process too, about that term rollover. I have very good friends that work for other cities and they would darn well make sure that they're that they spent the money they were allocated in let's say 21 22 because they didn't have any rollover into 23 24. So make it up a car whatever software what is our policy because as we're doing our budgets I don't really I don't really remember talking about hey we've got you know 400,000 bucks left in our 22 budget that's going to roll over to 23 4 because the department has didn't spend all their money what i can i can take this one so when we meet with each department head during our marathon week of meetings <laughs> the mayor can contest to this he was in them we just sit down and say have you you know here's your big ticket items have do you are you planning on spending this by the end of the year? Do you want to ask council to rebudget it? We use the term rebudget because rollover gets confusing. But if you look in that big sheet that I addendum thing attached to your budget, you're going to see a bunch of stuff in there that says rebudget, rebudget, rebudget. Mm -hmm. So that's our process. We do not just roll things over. Council has to approve any rebudgeting. So we, you know, we ask the department heads, do you want to ask the council? Yes, no. Um, sometimes council will say no. Uh, most of the time you won't, you say yes. But there's a lot of stuff that we actually do that with. And you can see it in that one page, that big Excel spreadsheet I sent out with your budget. A lot of it is capital project related. I will say that. So and, and Rich, Rich, just on my philosophy that um, actually I encourage our department heads to ask us to extend it because I don't want them to spend money on things just because I got I got to spend my money because it's going to be gone. So right. uh, we at least this was really my first budget going through. I encouraged people that we didn't have the ability to purchase or spend the money. Um, and I kind of committed to them that we would move it over. So it it offset something that we're still trying to do because i i've been in on that corporate side where well i better spend it because if i don't spend it then i'm going to lose it and that's not the philosophy that i want to have and going forward i like as stupid as it sounds i like that as a council person too because of just what you said people will spend money haphazardly to get some value for their departments if we don't you know roll it over it would just be nice to, I mean, I'm sure there's some things that got lost in last year's budget that maybe didn't get rolled over. And it'd just be nice to know, hey, it's all going to get rolled over unless we specifically say, no, don't do that. And, and I don't, as mayor, I don't, I don't want to penalize the department, say like public works that have done a great job of trying to keep a piece of equipment going. 
you know, and then I cut their budget because they didn't spend it, you right. know, yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. What's our next topic? Grant update. All right, Sarah, it's you. Oh, can I just ask one really quick? I'm sorry. When do we expect the first budget amendment, Angie? Uh, that will probably, I was looking through, we only have, have like less than a handful of things currently. So I'm probably going to wrap that into like end of June. Okay. Because then by then we should have hopefully this golf course stuff worked out and that's going to require, I'm going to bring that up later in this meeting actually. So there's, <laughs> Some things we need to work through, and then I'll get one together. Thanks. Yep. Hello. Can you guys hear me? So we're just going to run through our active grants at this point. Um, we have kind of put a hold off applying for large grants at this point. Um, just be other than like annual grant applications that we typically go after because we are letting the new project project manager and Scott get their feet underneath them, um, kind of regrouping. Uh, but we do have some anticipation of moving forward through several of um, you know priorities, um, including affordable housing, um, assistance with infrastructure, uh, all the regular stuff that we need to continue to seek funds for on an annual basis. But active right now, we have the, uh, this is sorted by year of award with the exception of the WASDOT BIL funds. So what you'll see on the first line is the surface transportation block set aside funds. Uh, that is the high dune trail. And the next line is WASDOT BIL funds. Those go hand in hand, even though those were awarded at the end of 2021. I wanted to make sure that they stay together. Uh, we are in the process of bringing the construction uh, lowest bid quote, or excuse me, lowest bid to council on the 24th um, for approval in order to move forward with the construction of the High Dune Trail. So that's where we're at. So that, that grant is in progress. The 2020 pre-disaster mitigation, 2018 grant application period from WAT END is for the vertical evacuation structure. We are approximately 30% in design in that. Um, as we know, there are some uh, areas of cost efficiencies uh, where we'll need to supplement for those costs, if we proceed on moving for, if we want to proceed on moving forward as proposed, um, but there is some questions surrounding the funding available at the at the recommendation of WA EMD and OSPI to utilize the funding. So uh, we are holding the tsunami roadshow on May 10th at 6 p.m. to clear up any. Uh, miscommunication or answer public question. Um, so right now we're kind of in a holding pattern at that. And my apologies, I, I think it got on there, but actually this award has been extended until April 1st, 2024. Uh, while we work through construction and uh, other options with this grant funding for the vertical evacuation structure. In 2020, the airport was awarded several awards through 2021 um, for, we were awarded three separate awards for uh, airport rescue grant. Now this can be used on stopping the spread of COVID-19 pathogens, general maintenance and operations. Uh, we still have a balance remaining of 22,000 in one grant, 9,000 in another. Um, that, that's going to be assessed for necessary maintenance and supplement the general fund budget that we have at the airport for those costs, uh, such as restriping 
that's important to do every couple of years at the airport, uh, replacing taxiway reflectors, things that add up to be significant costs over a period of time. We have to illustrate that we are utilizing the funds and they're not just sitting there not being utilized. So uh, we plan on having a maintenance meeting with the airport on the 19th, so tomorrow actually, to identify some of those projects to implement towards those. Um, we have the airport improvement program for the design obstruction. We are actually closed out of the design and awaiting a $37,000 reimbursement for final closeout. And then we have the airport improvement program for the actual obstruction removal. That was for the construction. Uh, we are awaiting a budget amendment of up to 15% from FAA to supplement an additional $77,000 in costs uh, to um, account for mitigation, uh, wetland mitigation fees. That was not in the original application but they do have the caveat that they will pay up to 15% additional. So the um, funding agency is just waiting to administer that budget amendment in the case that we should need more. They don't wanna to have to do two. So we are awaiting a budget amendment cost on that. We are approximately 90% done on that project. What we are awaiting now is a final review of the plant wings that were placed in the um, wildlife WDFW land for uh, to, to ensure that they took hold over the winter and that they, they stayed there. So um, what we'll do is we'll do a final inspection of the plant wings, uh, address any additional needs, and then begin the closeout process. If we move on down, that covers the airport grants. In 2021, assistance to firefighters, uh, the 2020 new ambulance, uh, this is awarded in 2021, no expenses have been made out of, as of yet. There is a new ambulance being produced right now. Of course, it's under uh, a purchase order obligation. So we have secured it, but there may be some delay in getting an ambulance here prior to the uh, August deadline of August 22nd. So Chief Ritter and I, Assistant Chief Ritter and I are working together to assess how long that would be uh, for the ambulance to get on site. And there is a caveat per the funding agency that $100 a day will be assessed for any reason, for any day after that deadline. Um, I believe it's August 1st that we had anticipated it being here. And if it isn't, then Ron will have to pay us $100 a day. And that those costs will have to be utilized. Those fees have to be utilized for the same purpose as the ambulance. For, for example, uh, let's say they needed additional stock in the ambulance, they could utilize that $100 a day for it. But it, it's not revenue to the city, it's technically revenue to the project. 2021 CTP risk mapping is the study to assess erosion issues and solutions at Marine View Drive. A stakeholder meeting has been held, but and the median, the median tideline has been assessed. Also the highest tideline has been assessed and mapped, and we should be able to start producing reports that are tangible out to council here in the next quarter, I anticipate. Uh, right now, we're just gathering everyone together and continuing with the consultant doing the work there. They need to get out and do some additional drone views. So I'd say we're about 50% complete on the on this grant, um, we are on target to complete by September 30th of this year. COVID-19 DR4481 public assistance. 
That is actually to reimburse costs for COVID-19. This has been a very lengthy process. We have to first work with FEMA and then it's passed on to the state. And then we receive reimbursement for 75% to 100% of costs that we put out to help battle COVID. And a lot of these costs, actually I'd say 99% of these costs were to supplement for those meals that we provided to the community. So uh, the, all we are waiting on this is the actual reimbursement. Bulletproof, proof, bulletproof vest program. This is the 2021 award. It is not fully expended. There's still a balance that needs to be expended, but we have to be able to purchase those vests before they are reimbursed and that's 50% of the cost. So as we continue to bring on new officers and purchase their bulletproof vest, those are where uh, that those reimbursements are placed. DR4539 is reimbursement damage for January and February 2020. In fact, I just I just submitted the final paperwork to law EMD. Again, this is a process that you have to work with FEMA, which is a very lengthy process, and they see what is applicable, then they pass it on to law EMD. Uh, so it's taken some time, and this grant has been open for quite some time. So uh, we are wrapping that up and should receive final, final reimbursement for that. I'd imagine then, I'd say the next two weeks. Typically, they take four to six weeks to process, but... 2021 Transportation Improvement Board Point Brown Crosswalk. Obviously, that's the crosswalk that's being worked on right now, and we are on target to complete as defined by the scope of work. Uh, the Shoreline 2022 Shoreline Master Plan Grant Update Grant. Uh, we are required to complete the Shoreline Master Plan update by June 30th, 2023. Just one moment, okay. please. So the 2022 Shoreline Master Plan Update Grant, uh, we are required to complete the SMP. The Marshall Reed has been working on this with AHBL, and we are on target to have it completed by June 30th, 2023. 2022 Bulletproof Vest Program, there have been no reimbursements provided as of yet because we need to spend our oldest balances first, but we do have a expiration date of August 31st, 2024. So I do anticipate that being um, that being spent out. 2023, so far, we've received a WCIA risk reduction grant, which was for the traffic calming signage for Dolphin Avenue. And that will be implemented as soon as we can get those signs in. Legislative appropriations. Sarah, do you know if the signs have been ordered? Uh, I am not sure. I can double check with Chief Logan, but I know that was on her top priority. I know she was going, we were talking about it Monday. Yes, I, I know that that is one of her priorities. Thank 2021 you. vertical evacuation tower, and excuse me, 2019 vertical evacuation tower. Uh, they have not been ordered yet. So these legislative appropriations are actually to support our matching share, um, first for the vertical evacuation tower and second for the high dune trail. This has been a part of our budget for the last, well, since 2019, we've received $137,000 for the high dune trail and $490,000 for the vertical evacuation tower. Uh, we have to expend our match first when we are involving federal dollars. So we have not utilized this funding yet, but we will continue to um, move forward as we move forward with the projects. In pending, we have a 2021 DR4593, 2021 public assistance from FEMA. This was reimbursement damages associated with the 2021 storm. Uh, I am working with the funding agency to identify eligible costs it is all in their arena to review at this time. They may or may not reimburse us for this. What these storm damages are, are for example, um, when, this, when the vacuum system begins to flood and they have to replace it with parts, the, those parts 
can be applied to this funding. This is the same as the DR4539 public assistance. But by the way, it's documented and you have to meet a certain threshold in order to be eligible for reimbursement. I don't think that DR4593 will qualify for that, that threshold, but we have submitted the costs that we had. In 2022, FEMA Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. Um, last year we submitted, and it was just December 29th. So I mean, it's almost 2023 application, but um, it was some, the this was actually submitted in 2021 as well. This is for a seismic retrofit of our three million gallon water storage tank to ensure that if we have any seismic activity, we will still have access to fresh water. This is actually a grant application submitted by, uh, well, through my my desk, but with. Um, Gray and Osborne, because it is a lot of engineering language that is required. So uh, they, we, I work closely with GNO on that, and it is for an eight hundred thousand dollar project. Our city share is two hundred thousand dollars in order to seismic retrofit that and 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 secure our freshwater storage. And that's what I have for you today. Rich, Richard. Could you tell me again, when and where is this, what date and where is the Tsunami Roadshow? Uh, the Tsunami Roadshow, and I, this will be released publicly as soon as we get through logistics meeting. We're still hammering out all of the details, but it is held on the calendar for May 10th at 6 p.m. At, at the convention center. And all entities will be there, including um, Washington EMD, uh, tsunami experts, tsunami modelers, OSPI, um, Grace Harbor Emergency Management, and the city. And I believe I, I believe the list is even longer than that. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, okay. Sarah. Thank you. All right. Um, Sarah, I think our next agenda item is the golf course. Let's see. Well, city administrator report, he's not here. So it's the golf course. Mayor, do you want to open that one up? Uh, certainly, uh, since uh, we've spent the early part of the day uh, working on the golf course, um, each of you from the council, um, you've got the the amendment or the um, the contract that uh, we are going to bring before council for you guys to review and take a look at it and get back to us. Um, I think uh, uh, Sarah Logan has been out uh, talking to you about the possibility of having a special meeting. Um, I think that the the agreement that we have um, was a lot of work on all sides, but I think that we have a, um, a workable um, contract. We met with the um, the financial piece, uh, the the financial people, the basically the Angie version of uh, Troon. A really good conversation. I think that we will have uh, a bet a better understanding of uh, profit and loss statement as well as uh, um, we were very clear, and I think we're all on the same page about what their roles and responsibilities are as far as managing uh, people, um, process for getting approval on capital projects, where the money goes, um, all those type of things. So, um, but it is, it is going to be a dramatic difference in how that we've run the golf course as far as a, um, from a city council point of view. Uh, since all the, the revenue are actually going to be streaming through to Troon, and then at the end of the, they take all the expenses out. But we will be uh, much more involved in the golf course, uh, running of the golf course than we've had with uh, with Kurt. Uh, I think that's going to be a positive thing, but um, it, it will be happening very, very soon. So um, 
I think those are the those are the big ones. We have not until we have the contract um, in hand. We haven't. We've had um, outside vendors come in and start surveying the equipment to give give me an idea of what the equipment is. I haven't got the reports back on those, um, but we'll start working on those after we have approval from the council. So that's kind of where we are with the golf course right now. Does the council have like a timeline to get back to you and then like a tentative study session date or what is, how does that look? Yeah, I believe the target's Thursday, Thursday at six, right, Sarah? Yes. And everybody's confirmed so far, aside from Richard Wills, who said any time this week. I, I just will have to let Vicki Cummings know that I won't be able to make the Council of Governments meeting. It's at 6.30 Thursday. My, my hope is that you as council, uh, if you've got any concerns with whatever, whatever, whatever verbiage is, that uh, um, you can get back to us and that we can work on responding. Um, so if there's anything that we missed or you'd like to see before we bring it to council, um, that we can that we can do that. So you want that responded to you and Sarah or just you? I've got uh, why don't you send it to me and that way um, Sarah can uh, collect them all. I mean of what whatever we need to have. Okay. And keep keep her out of the middle until you look at it first. Right, because and then part of it is what it, what is the question? Some of it is stuff that I would know. Some of it I would have to talk to Truon. Some of it would have to talk to our attorney, etc. The good news is we came up with a financial model. I think that between the surplus from the general fund and some cost savings from um, not hiring some of our street people quite yet that we can accommodate the costs and then possibly look at the capital fund because we do have some money in there for the equipment purchase from Kurt. So that'll be discussed Thursday as well, right, Mayor? Um, well, we could. It depends if the council wants to talk about it because there's two parts. There's the, the contract that we're looking at and that it's kind of the upfront cost of just funding um, like uh, the payroll account and stuff like that. And then there's a second part that will come back on approval of whatever the purchase is. And I don't even have a, I don't have a number. And because we will have conversations on whether or not there's some pieces of equipment we're going to take, uh, what the inventory is at the uh, clubhouse, um, all that type of stuff. So uh, once we have the First agreement, then we will start working with um, of coming up with a number to bring before the council. Angie, why don't you just, because uh, uh, I believe that you feel much more comfortable uh, after you've met with their financial people today of just how the the process is going to work from a financial point of view in the city? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, most of you, I don't know who is on agenda setting, but uh, I had some concerns about the original, like the city would be responsible for opening a bank account and funding the bank account and doing all the accounting. And I'm like, no, that's what we hire you for. So we have come back to basically they're doing the accounting. We pay them. $7,000 a month, their base management fee. Uh, we pay them a professional service fee each month. Uh, and they do, those are our transactions monthly. And then they do the accounting. And once a month, they reconcile the books and they send us a check for our profits. We're going to deposit that into the city's golf course fund and use that money to pay for capital projects, their incentive payment, if applicable, and any um, replenishment of their operating fund, which has to stay at a balance of 50,000. So uh, really on our end, there's only a few transactions each month um, and they're doing the majority of the accounting. And that's presuming there is a profit. 
Exactly. So there's probably going to be some months where there's not, but the hope is, is to have money in that, in our fund to be able to fund the months where we have a loss. So everything's going to be separate for golf course only. Like everything we make on the golf course goes into the golf course fund. Every golf course expense that we have to make comes out of the golf course fund. And the hope is just that that stays solvent and that we can build up a, a balance in there to do some capital projects in the future. How did, so, it, uh, how did the 25 to 40 grand capitalization of that account turn into 50 plus two, 52 grand? Uh, that's, that was their estimate to get them started for like payroll and petty cash and cash drawers. And, so, and that is, that is our money. That is, yeah. I understood. Yeah. It's just they said they probably needed 25 to 40 grand to capitalize that account. And then on the, this the, one, goal, the goal is that that is the 50, the 50,000 is what we set the, the number up so that we don't have to continue to fund it. And so that it'll, it'll just, it'll just be the payroll account. Yeah. Okay. Now the, now the incentive that we set is that uh, for them to make a profit of a hundred thousand, that's when the incentive kicks in. Uh, with it. And in our conversation with them, um, they did not balk at that number. Um, so they think it's doable. And and I think it's probably doable also, um, just due to the fact that uh, um, we don't market, we have not marketed the golf course. And I think there's a, there's a huge potential there. Now that 100,000, of course, I'm very aware of that, you know, we we're going to be putting money back in since so we buy, have to buy equipment, you know, and then of course we've done like uh, the sprinklers before. So that's back to um, Angie's point of point of view. Um, our, our goal, but our goal is for the golf course, not to be a drain on the city. Yeah. So were you able to remove that $6,000 travel expense that was in the original? No, uh, and, and part of it is what have, what it is, is for basically when they bring somebody in from Seattle to help to, with staffing um, or training, that that is really for hotel rooms. So it's, they're not, it's not for labor, um, but it's just for someone that, uh, is is coming out here to help i'm thinking i'm and tell me if these are more appropriate questions to ask on thursday but i'm, I'm thinking about the issue that the auditors brought up regarding paying overnight stays for the sawdust the wood carvers the uh remember the um um they had a finding or whatever it's called. Yeah. The, the, the convention it, center was paying. Yeah. You know, are we addressing that? And have we made sure that we're okay with that sort of thing? Yeah, it'll be okay because it's in our contract. The issue with the convention center is there was nothing in writing supporting those payments. There's no policy, no contract agreement. So our our contract that we're writing up has up to six thousand dollars per year reimbursable for travel so that would cover that that's a great question though and and then marketing they're responsible for marketing but presumably it's coming out of whatever funding that we put in the golf course account is that how that works or who's, there, who's picking up the fee for the, the cost for that there's two two parts of their marketing part. There is the Troon marketing or premier marketing, which would be the cross promotion with the different golf courses they have. Then there is a second part that it would be additional marketing for the city of Ocean Shores, the Ocean Shores golf course. With that, that would be the cost of the city, but that would go through the golf course. So typically most businesses would have a marketing fund. Um, our golf course, I don't think probably had one with it but that but any of that uh, marketing dollars would be approved by the city and presumably then angie you'll be building the uh, uh the budget statements to create lines under golf course now it's just basically one line it's going to be a lot more lines more like the uh water works type 
No, that was the that was the concern when they wanted us to have everything in our name was we would literally have to book every single expense like down to the golf tees. Uh, this model that we're doing, the account set up in their name. So ours ours is still pretty limited. It's we pay professional service fees to them. Uh, we get an, a profit check each month. We'll have capital items in there. Um, but it's still it's still going to be pretty minimal line items um, on, on our budget, but not on what they provide us. Exactly. So they're going to give us detailed profit and loss statements every month because they have to have those as support to that check they're sending us. And that has that has to have an audit trail attached to it. So their books are going to be super detailed. And okay. she she said we could ask if we wanted copies of the invoices down to that level. Um, but they're going to, they perform or they prepare all those for us and we'll okay. get them posted on the website and it'll be all out there for everybody to look at, but our books are going to be pretty simple still. And that was, uh, resolved. We, we got there uh, a couple of days ago and then met with their accounting staff today. And I think we're all good. So, good. and she did say <laughs> they're tight with their money too. I liked that that response so it's like yeah we're all on the same page <laughs> john unfortunately i've got a couple pages for you but one that's kind of come up you know i appreciate the they want their they want their bonus based on operating profit rather than net profit so i mean you know it's just you're just wordsmithing the difference between what's what's in fixed and what's in variable which is fine but you know they 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 split up their seventy five hundred dollars a month and one's under the uh, base management fee and the other's under professional employment services fee, yet they didn't call out the professional employment services fee to be part of the operating costs. So no, I, I think they did. Well, that's not what if I read. Look, if you look at the, the top section. Okay, well, I'll, I'll write, I'll look again and I'll write okay. the note to you, but I just, it was just a, you know, it was just a little nothing that we need to, be on top of. And that was something that got brought up in our meeting today as well. They were going to clarify how that was going to look. Uh, the base management fee, the 7,000 a month. 6,500 a month. Uh, yeah, that's right. That, that's the higher of the two. I think it starts. 60, was it 65 and 25? I thought it was 70. 65 and two. Sorry. Something like that. I'll have to look. The base management fee, though, is a check that we would cut out of our golf course fund and send directly to Premier, is what they're called. We're still working through the details of that professional service fee, if that would be cut from the city or cut out of that operating fund. So she was going to follow up on that for us and get us an answer. And it that's exactly what I was talking about was yeah. how it was. It has to do with the taxes, is all I know. So we, okay. yeah. Yeah, they're trying to put stuff in a different pot to understood. I, I just want to comment. I just reread that section just before this meeting started. And and uh, Rich, you're, you're correct. It is 65 and 25. Totals 90. Any other questions, Rich? That I'll, you have send pages. I'll, I'll send them to you. It's it's okay. It's just, you know, <laughs> I do this for a living. You okay. ask, Mary, you're going to get it. All right. And you'll get it ahead of time. It won't be five minutes before the damn meeting. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it to you today. All right. Okay. So is that it on golf course? Looks like it. Okay, then then I think it's it's my just wrap up, right? The mayor, as far as our agenda. Yep. Um, that uh, first of all, I appreciate you guys being on this call. Uh, the finance committee is a very important committee because this is our opportunity to for you to ask questions and also for us to get clarification on what you guys are thinking. Um, and sometimes it's I gotta dig in um, and find out what the answers are. Um, uh, the goal of the city is to obviously be um, 
very intentional of what we're spending our money on and making sure that we get the, the best value that we can. Um, the golf course is going to be a challenge for us just because we don't know because we haven't been in this this business before. And we are, there's a lot of things we're doing as a city with Truon that Truon just has not worked before. They haven't worked with this small of a city. Um, and so that's that's why our contract took a little bit longer for us to put together. Um, but I believe it's the right thing. Um, but I'm also, which uh, Catherine does a very nice job of continuing to remind us is that we have ARPA money um, and then we're gonna start spending. And that is also a big part of what our budget is. So it's very important that we make sure as we spend money that we are looking at our budget on a constant basis and making sure that we're not overspending because there is a, a cushion that we have that's an ARPA money that is one-time money that we're not going to see again. So this committee is going to be very important. And especially as we move forward on the golf course, very important to um, for this committee to understand of what we're what we're doing. Um, you know, because there's um, I'm sure in the next year that'll be one of the top topics of citizens of looking at of did we make the right decision? which again, I think that we we do. Um, we are in the process of uh, we're, I think we have a week to go on the RFP for the capital um, improvement um, survey. Uh, so once we get that rolling, um, that'll be, that'll at least give us kind of a mapping of where we need to go. Uh, we know we have physical plant issues. Um, and again, to what um, all three of you have said, it's important for us to make sure that we uh, manage our money correctly. And part of that is reinvesting within in our buildings, but doing it in the right way. Um, so um, again, I appreciate the job that you guys are doing. Um, it helps me um, because the more time of just like on this contract, um, as you guys review it, there's always something that we probably missed. And our my goal is try to make it right before we get there. So um, so again, I think, thank you very much for uh, being part of this team. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah. Angie, anything else? No, I am done. I was just updating my numbers to get the 65,000 and 25,000 in there. So Okay. All, all right. right. I'm good. Thank you all. Thank